can see I've got my tools on my left hand side and um, the one that you click on to use should highlight in red and on the right hand side I've got the different thickness of said tool at the bottom is my little color swatch to show me what color I've chosen and that's all we're really going to use just just now and um, so we're going to go with the poppy wreath idea so the first thing you can do obviously is freehand draw I've chosen the fine pen um, tool and I'm going to choose red and I can just to fill in a block of colour I go to my roller app and here you'll see lots of variations of the colour block so I'm just going to go for the normal one and I'm going to click on the space I want to fill in and just to show you I'll just pick a slightly different kind of pattern to fill in the rest I'll then go back to my pen and choose black you can play around with it give your children lots of time to take some inspiration off the internet or the resource files that we've got here and they're happy with their poppy if you go to the second hand um, second from last tool the cutting tool and you draw around your shape this now means that your poppy is able to be changed size using your fingers to increase and decrease you can turn your poppy and as I've just done there you can copy your poppy I'm sorry there's a lot of that in this so if you would like to copy your shape you put two fingers on it and kind of shake it um, and move move the shape away so you put two fingers on hold down for a wee second give it a wee shake and move one poppy and that allows you to copy that shape you can only copy it and change size if you have the little dotted line around it as soon as you click off of that your poppy is sat exactly where you've put it and you cannot move it again unless you go back to your cutting tool and repeat that process take your main poppy put get the kids to put all of their efforts into maybe one or two poppies and I'll show you some inspiration of mine so I have done some lots of different ones here as you can see there's different colors I've done some ones that are a bit fancy I have done ones based on George O'Keefe and take one of those poppies and put it into the top of your screen like so so this poppy up here is my main poppy and I'm going to just keep that up there and everything I want to do now, all the copies I want to make come from that original poppy. Another way to do it is to get an image. Here's a George O'Keefe image of a poppy that she painted. Get an image and actually trace it. So I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger. I'm going to go to my pen tool. I'm going to go to my black. And I'm really roughly just going to trace around this poppy. For the children that have got slightly less confidence in freestyle drawing, this might be a little bit more appealing, but obviously it's whatever suits you know the children in front of you. Here is just a really simple idea. So you take this image and from this you trace it. I got this image simply by going into the resource file, copying image into my photos and then uploading it at the top there you can um, upload a little file with your tracing you then go to that little three dots at the top you press the one in the middle that's got the little um, cross in the corner of the bit of paper and now I'm free to color my image in in whichever way I like The final way I thought you could use with your children is if you go to the ruler and you press symmetry, as you can see you've got varying different numbers of lines of symmetry. If you go to the cross, back to your pen tool, you can draw a poppy very simply by using that.
to remove the symmetry lines you just click back on the ruler and that will make it go back into the, the toolbox. Here's some I did based on the Georgia O'Keeffe and that was simply a copied design. I freehand drew my petals and then I used the same colour schemes as Georgia did. Here I actually used two different styles of poppy, again simple as you like. And so there's some ideas for your poppies. Um, you don't have to use a circle, you can kind of make your own. Here I've done one which is a double wreath. As you can see it's a bit overlapping and a bit different. It's t entirely up to yourselves. Hi, I'm Claire Boney. I'm going to talk today about how to create a narrative over some music. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is use voice memo um, and then place those files into GarageBand. So we're going to start by going into voice memo. So if you select the voice memo app first, um, the first thing we want to do is to ask the child to say that we're going to read some poetry then it's, they're going to have to um, record it by pressing the red circle at the bottom left hand corner. So that's your record button. So it comes out with a new recording and you can start recording immediately when you press that button. When you're finished, all you need to do is press done. Um, if you want to test your recording, you can press the black triangle under the recording. So it comes out with a new record. record. And you can see that it's recorded just exactly what has been spoken. You can then change the title by tapping on the title and then simply change it. I'll just put their war letters just for something just now. So first of all, we'll do if um, the child is doing it on their own garage band individually. So what we do is we go up to the share button. Okay. And we go into save to files. So if you select save to files, you'll see that it'll automatically come up with the garage band for iOS and garage band file transfer. So that's exactly where we want it to go, right into our garage band. So all we do is press save and we'll find that that goes right into the garage band. The other way to do it is that if you are asking your class to do various voice memos and send them to you to place on one garage band, so you can have a whole class remembrance service, what you need to do is go up to the the full file sharing and this time what you need to do is save to files and you're looking for iCloud Drive okay so you're going to save it to a folder um, I've already created a folder called Remembrance Day you would click on the folder that you had created for your class they would click on this and then press save and it'll put them all into the iCloud Drive so if you can find your garage band icon and select that. So the first thing we need to do is to create a song. So you're pressing on that plus to create a new song. Okay, so what we're coming out here is we're selecting audio recorder and down on the left of that box is a little microphone saying voice and that is what you want to select. So select the voice. Okay. Now, up here on the, across the control bar at the top, um, the tracks button, which is the three bricks along, third on the left, it looks like a little brick wall. If you press that, it'll turn into a microphone and that's where you want to be to start this, okay? So if you click the plus button right along at the right hand side here, it says song selection, section A, eight bars. So that's like keeping your loop as eight bars, but we might want to have a lot longer than eight bars. So what we can do is just select that now and change it to automatic. So collect, select automatic. And what that'll do is it'll change the selection length so that it fits nicely to however many pieces of work you want to put in there, it'll automatically increase the length for you so that's fairly handy and that has to be done at this point not once you've brought the music in otherwise you'll run into some issues so the next thing you want to do is click apple loops which is this one up here so it looks like a, a loop so it's um from the right hand side it's third one in okay 
and there you will see the recordings that you have saved to GarageBand. So you can see some that I have um, saved into GarageBand earlier from my voice memos. Um, I also have some other things in there that some other people have sent me purely by going to browse items from the files app. And then you will see the ones that the children have sent into you that you can then select and bring it into your garage band to be able to use. Um, the voice memos will appear as M4A files. And if you are bringing music in, they will be MP3 files. So what we're going to do is select the one that we want. So we're going to do um, the Soldier by Rupert because I said earlier. So if you simply click and hold and drag it in, I'm going to drag it up to the top line and to number one. So I now have that in there. I can test that by pressing the Soldier, the soldier by, by Rupert, Rupert Brooke. Brooke. If, if I, I should die, die think only this of me. me. That the, and I can press stop. Um, what we need to also do is take off the clicks because we really um, don't want to have those in here. So quite simply press on the triangle and that will remove it. There's, There's some, some corner, corner of a foreign, foreign field. field. Okay, you can just drag that back to the start as well so you're ready for the next thing. Now, what we're going to do now is select some music. So you can either select music from Garage Band to put in or you can select your own music. Now, what I did was I've gone into the internet and I have selected some free mp3 files that which were appropriate for what I wanted to do for my remembrance service so you can save those again on your iCloud drive as mp3 files and you can quite simply bring them in here just like you did with the voice memo recording so I'm just going to press on loop again and you should be able to see a few different things. So I've got Amazing Grace there. You can see that it's an MP3 file, so that's my music. There's another one, Going Home, that's an MP3 file, that's music. So you're going to select the one you want and simply hold and drag it. Okay, so you may notice that you are so good and you want to change the volume of the backing track that you have um, placed in GarageBand. So in order to do that, what you need to do is if you want to decrease on whichever line, so select the line that you want to decrease the volume on. So I'm going to select the music line and you're going to press the fourth button along, one, two, three, four, which is three lines next to the FX button. Okay, and it's called the track controls button and you'll see that it brings up the controls. So what we can do is track volume. I'm just going to slide it down because I want it to be less. I can now test the volume by pressing the soldier, soldier by Rupert Brook. If I should if I die, should think die, only this of me, of me, that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever. That your backing volume is a lot less than your speaking volume, okay? And you can just simply press that button, again, the track control to get back. And again, if you want to just do the, the different volume of um, the first line, again, you just press the track control button and you can change the volume there as well and change press the track control button to get back should you wish to change the volume of the entire thing the soldier, the soldier by the is the sliding button if i should die think, think, think only this of me, of me that there's that some, there some okay now you can also add extra poetry or extracts in and add them together. So if you want the voices of lots of different children in the class, for example. Um, so if you just go along to the end of where you were, and you can see there I've added the next piece of poetry and you'll see it decor a mess. The soldier the by Rupert. Rupert. And it's just simply go up to loops, select the one you want and click and drag it into place after the last one that you have completed um, and you can do exactly the same with the music as well so if your music isn't long enough for all your your extracts for example you can simply click on that line and go up to loops and select the next one so I'll select say going home so I'm just simply going to click drag it in and move it to the end so that when it finishes playing Amazing Grace it'll start to play going home um, and that will continue 
as far as you want it to. Um, you can drag it into place or insert some more extracts that the kids have read along the top. So, for example, um, I will put in Poppy Poppy. So you can simply click and drag it in and it will go up on the line as well. And then you've got a whole production. When you're happy that you've put in all the poetry or the extracts, etc., that you want to, and you've put your songs along the background, you've got your volume sorted, you've pressed play, you're happy with the finished product. If you go to the top left, the little page, um, and save it to either on my iPad or to your iCloud, um, and then it's ready to use. Thank you. When you've launched AR Maker, click on Create Your Own Scene and press the Start button. You will then have to move your iPad around to discover your surfaces. So this might take a wee bit of time for it to configure. But once you've got it, you can then tap on the screen inside the boxes where you'd like to start your scene. To add a new picture, tap New on the left-hand side and choose the folder at the bottom to get your photo library. You can then choose your image from your library. You can resize the image by zooming in to it. And once you're happy, you can press the tick. You then press a tick again and it will add it in. Press OK and it will give you the screen that you had previously. You can then move your iPad around and select where you want it to go. Once you've selected where you'd like it to go, you can then zoom it to make it bigger or smaller. You can also tap the up and down arrows to move it up and down on your screen. Once you're happy, press place and it will then place it in position for you ready to go. You can then press new again and press the folder again and that will bring your photo library up and you can add a second image in. So here's my poppy wreath. If I press a tick and tick again, that will then add that to your AR library and you're able to add that in by pressing it. You can then move that to wherever you would like it to go. You can play around with this yourself to decide where it is. And again, you can make it bigger or smaller and then press place when you're ready for it in position. The beauty of this is you're then able to go further in. You can move your iPad in to see the image bigger or you can come back out to see it further away. You can also see it from different angles too. You would also have the option if you press the back button to press the photo uh, button and that will take a photograph of your work in front of you and that will automatically save in your photo library so you can take as many photos of that as you want another beauty of AR Maker is you can then add multiple things to the same scene so I'm now going to choose a different war memorial and I'm going to add that in by pressing the tick and tick again then you can move that to a different location again you can use the zoom tools to make it bigger or smaller and you can add that to the same scene that you previously had. So you've now got two war memorials in the same scene. Again, if you press the new button and then press the folder again, you can add in the poppy or you can just press the, the poppy that's already there in your library. You can then drop that into place and then you have one, two war memorials with wreaths in front of them. You can then obviously move your iPad to get the right position for it. And again, you can take another photograph of that by pressing your back button and then the camera button. Another option you've got for AR Maker is to use your own digital photos and add them in. So if I paste into a keynote slide, a drawing of some puppies that is made on Sketchy's schools, what you can then do is you can tap away from the image and tap the brush to give you these options. And on slide background, choose no fill to make it a transparent image. You can then tap on the image itself and choose the paintbrush again to choose instant alpha. And what you're looking to do here is remove all of the background part of the photos. So you can see here all the white spaces there. I can tap and then drag my finger to make it blue and it will then remove those from the image to make it transparent. Once you've got all of those done, you can then tap away and you'll see that you've got that transparent image in front of you. To get this onto AR Maker, you need to tap the three dots at the top and then export, choose images, and make sure you've selected PNG as the format and also that the green transparent background is turned on. Press export and you can save that image to your photo library. What you can then do is if you go out of Keynote and you come on into AR Maker, you can return to the scene where you had your previous ones. 
you can then press reset if you need to do a brand new one you need to scan your desk again this is the the kind of uh, annoying part of ar maker because it can take a little bit of time to find that environment uh, especially if there's lots of light shining on it as you can see there but eventually it will find those spaces and those squares you can then tap on the square to choose where you want it to go you can then press new and files again and you'll see your transparent poppy there then you can press your ticks again to add that into AR Maker. And just like before, you place that in, you can make it as big as you like, you can move it up and down as well using the arrows down the bottom uh, right hand side. And then again, you're able to go on that kind of 3D tour of it, you can go around it, It's uh, you see this, the same on the front and the back, so you're able to see that from different angles as well.